Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, and in the last episode we actually fought off with Prince Mikolas, also known as King Mikolas in the future games. But in this episode we're actually going to be finally fighting off with the Dark Pontifex, also known as Garneth himself. And in order to do that, all we need to do is just hit him a couple times with our Starlight Tome, something we've been kind of building up throughout the entirety of the game due to the fact that we had to obtain the Star Sphere and the Light Sphere in order to make the... or in order to get the... Com which were the components in order to make the Starlight Tome, which we got from Godo, which is apparently Garnef's master. And with that, let's actually get into Chapter 23, the final stretch of this game because there's only two other chapters after this, and let's finally see if we can maybe save Marth's sister, Elise. So, with that, let's get into Chapter 23, The Dark Pontifex. Or Dark Pontifex, but honestly, I think The Dark Pontifex makes more sense as a title. Hmm, so you finally arrived. Young Prince, I have been waiting for you. Yes, I have waited and I am ready to strike. Once you are dead, this world is mine. <laughs> and I need not fear Medius at all. With Falchion and Imhulu in my grasp, none can oppose me, not even a dragon. You have journeyed far just to meet in combat, but can you find the real me? If you cannot, Falchion will never be yours. And with that, Chapter 23 has officially started. And also, I'm just gonna mention this now. I no I actually checked if the music ever changes in this game, and apparently there's only about like three tracks in this in this game, apparently. So you have this theme that we've heard throughout the entire game. You have the victory theme, and then you have the final fight theme. Because I was wondering about that, because I never noticed it actually change. I was wondering if it ever would, and apparently it doesn't, so I guess we won't be listening to this song for until we get to the final chapter, which I'm going to be glad when we finally hear a new track, to be honest. Because honestly, um, I've heard this song maybe 80 plus times more than you guys, because I have to do a little bit of training in between episodes to make sure I grab items and stuff like that. But I definitely am going to be glad to hear a different song in the near future, I'm going to be honest. But, due to the fact that we did find out that Thabes, this is the city that we're in, is actually the City of Illusion, we actually did take a small look at the chapter at the end of the episode like we normally do, and we actually figured out which one was actually Garnef before um, even starting this chapter to begin with, due to the fact that he's the only one actually holding the tome that actually blocks the damage, so... The poor Garnef, he thought he could do something special here, but him pretending to be um, units with Swarm is honest. Uh, honestly, probably the worst thing he possibly could do. So honestly, we already know which one is him. But do that being the case, um, we do have to get our treasure chest in the very beginning of the episode, so we do need to make sure to grab those. I don't know if there's anything special in them. But we do want to make sure to grab it just in case, due to the fact that it could be something very important. Due to the fact that there could be something like, I don't know, um, a stat boosting item, like a Draco shield, or something similar to it. So, due to that being the case, we do want to actually teleport Marth right into the treasure room. Because that'll save us a turn for him. And then we're also going to then, after we get him all the way up there and then get him out of this room... We're going to actually teleport him back into another area, which will make it easier to have him follow the team, since we do need him in the front line to make sure that we can actually capture the throne in um, decent time, that is. So first off first, let's actually open up our first chest. Ooh, a talisman. I'll definitely take one of those. Okay, cool. So now we can maybe get 14 resistance? I don't know the max of resistance in this game, but I definitely will take it. We also notice that there is a lot of mages on this map, so a frontal assault isn't going to be the smartest thing, but it's also going to be a smart thing in order to get all the people off the map, since we do pretty much one-shot mages as is, so just in case we will be careful about that. Let me just make sure of one thing, because there's one person that has a door key, and thankfully it was Ogma that I moved, because I did know it was one of my um, heroes, but I wasn't sure which one, so thankfully we did move the right character. Okay, so based on 
how the last chapter went, it seems like the, um, it's not going to be as hard as I thought the game would end up being, because of the fact that we actually had a pretty easy time with the previous chapter, since I, honestly I didn't think um, Nicholas was actually the hardest thing I've ever fought before, honestly, because he was pretty decent, he wasn't like really strong, but he was still like, I guess formidable in a way due to the fact that there was just a bunch of, um, what do you call them? There was a bunch of Wyvern Knights and Pegasus Knights, but the Pegasus Knights aren't scary whatsoever, so those guys got pretty much um, destroyed in like basically one turn. But the Wyvern Knights, on the other hand, were actually kind of scary, since those guys are actually usually pretty well um, built, and they actually usually um, do quite a bit of damage um, sometimes, based on what I've seen so far, so honestly, although they can be a problem, I've seen... I think the only thing I'm really scared about is, like, Pachyderms, and, um, the mages with the, uh, I'm trying to think of what it is, um, the Swarm Tomes, yeah, the Swarm Tome mages, and maybe even Garnaf. Garnaf did, like, 16 damage with his tome, based on whatever I remember, so he could be a problem as well, but we should be fine as long as we have Starlight, so with that, I think that should be a decent turn to end off there, and there goes our first turn. Pretty easy, since the, everyone's kind of like far away from us, so we don't have to really worry about too much here, since we kind of just have to wait for the enemy to kind of make their own moves, since they're kind of far away from us, for the most part, other than the sniper and the one thief that's up there, but other than that, we're pretty much safe, because of the fact that there really isn't much near us, so it kind of gives us some time to kind of like figure out how we want to approach this map and how we want to deal with the nearby forces as is. And I knew this guy would be able to get to Minerva, so I was very ready for this guy to shoot me, but thankfully it looks like... Oh, actually if he did hit me it would have done some damage. Okay, um, I didn't expect the 25 damage from the Silver Bow due to the fact that the um, Rider's Bane weapons don't do nearly enough damage and I thought they were basically the same effectiveness as the bows. Apparently not. Okay then, um, well that could be a problem. Well, let's finish up opening our final chest, 10,000 gold. Eh, thanks I guess, but I honestly really don't need that. I haven't used an arena for like the longest time. And honestly, I don't even need any money anymore. The money has been very, well, nice to have. It's nice to use for whenever we need to deal with um, anything special, like, um, for instance, let's say, trying to think of what I, basically just weapons, basically. That's all I've been us using the, um, those, uh, my money for anyways. So let's see here. I just want to make sure that we're not running into something dangerous over here with these um, mages over here. Well, there is a Devil Sword user over there, but other than that, there's nothing really too dangerous. I also found out I've been wasting stacks of the Gradivus, so we're not going to be using that as much as I have been. Because of the fact that I thought Hammer Knee was going to be able to fix the, the weapon. And apparently, you can't use it on Regalia. And that's actually what it's called in this game. So anything that's Regalium can't be fixed by Hammerty. So we will be saving that for the final map from now on. Although I was using it willy-nilly and having a lot of fun with um, doing 40, 72 damage randomly, um, we will definitely be waiting until the final chapter to finally start using that as much as we want because... Yeah, I don't want to waste too many charges of that since it is a very nice thing to have because that is definitely something we don't need to be wasting. I'm also going to have um, Kane run over here and kind of block off the section just so we don't have to worry about the roaming mages that are coming this way. So this will block off a lot of the um, a lot of the people running this way in, in, the, in general. So it'll save us some time right here, so if we, as long as we, like, block off a decent section, we should be safe to do whatever we want. And I also believe the pure water is actually full of heal you in this game, unlike, um, in the, in the future games where they only, I think they do 30 or 40 HP, based on what I remember. Okay, since Navar is in the, or Ogma, I mean, Ogma is now in the area, we can finally use our door key, so now, now that Marth is now free, for next turn, that is actually perfect. Okay, so I don't think anyone's gonna um, 
appear behind us, so let's start moving Lena in order to get closer and closer to Marth so we can teleport him back to where he needs to be. And let's end our turn there for, ne uh, for Lena. Okay, next thing we want to do is I want to actually mend um, Minerva's wounds due to the fact that that guy did do 25 damage to us, so honestly, putting her back to where she was is probably a good thing, so just in case, back to give her back 25 HP, and let's create a bookmark just in case, just so I can come back to here, in case I do mess up somehow. Okay, so the closest big mage I can get to is this guy over here, so let's go to this bishop, since the bishops are more than likely going to be more stronger than the mages, mostly due to the fact that they are going to be higher in weapon level, I would think. So let's just focus these guys over the normal mages so we don't have to worry too bad here. Because these guys do have Belognon and thankfully he missed his first one and he was able to hit with the second one? Really? He's still faster than Minerva? Huh, that's surprising. 16. How much speed do these guys have and then? Because I'm actually... Oh, he has 16 speed too. Okay, now that makes sense. Because they do have the um, weapon weight. Okay, so maybe this wasn't a smart idea then. Okay, but there is something we can do here, so it's not like the worst case scenario. Due to the fact that Drong is in the area, so Drong can just come over. He can go and wipe this guy out, so we don't have to worry too much here. I'm going to throw a javelin onto him due to the fact that if they do attack him, he'll be able to attack back. So just in case, he'll have the ability of fighting back, just in case we need to worry about any of that. Um, I don't think we need to run everyone over there, but it might be a smart idea to do, just in case. But we are going to get rid of this other mage, just to make it a little bit safer here, just because I don't know what's going to happen when their enemy phase does come up, because I have a feeling that they're somehow going to be able to blast through my defenses, due to the fact that they do have the L fire as well, which I should have probably paid more attention to that, but... Okay, I do need to worry about that sniper though, so let me make sure we do have... Okay, we have Zane over here. So Zane can go over here, and then I think Ogma might be able to maybe get rid of the um, L fire mage. If that's possible, that would be perfect, since that will save us a... Maybe a restart, because I accidentally didn't even think about the 16 speed mages over there. Because I'm so used to having that UI, as I keep saying. I hate saying, I hate having to compare it to future games, because honestly, I really do miss the UI of the future games, because honestly, that would help so much in certain predicaments that I've ran into so far. Because honestly, if, um, if I had a UI, I wouldn't be running certain units in certain areas. I'll be completely honest. I'd probably be a little bit more safer with how I've been moving my units as I have been. Okay, so Navarre, I want you to kind of go up there. Other than that, I think that's basically the end of our turn, so with that, let's end our turn there. I do have a feeling that we probably messed up there by putting our units there due to the fact that they do double us, but I still have a feeling that they might miss due to the fact that the that certain weapons in the mage class um, actually have really low chances of hitting. So honestly, I don't think we're in too much of a problem, and also this bishop only has a fire tome, so that's pretty pretty easy for us. And then this guy has thunder, so thunder's not bad, but thunder does do some damage, as you can see, six damage, um, six damage twice does add up, so she's on one HP right now. So yeah, I did put her in a bad position, but Elfire does have a chance of missing. I believe it's 20% chance. But he might end up doubling me, but I don't think this thief can do any damage. Oh, he has Devil Sword. Well, that might do some damage, and I was right. So, I'll be right back once I figure out a better turn than that. Oops. Okay, so based on what I can tell, actually, um, I had to kind of redo that turn. I didn't expect the um, Devil Sword to actually do as much damage as it did. So apparently this thing can still do 6 damage through a couple of my units, so honestly, just staying back a turn is honestly the best thing to do. So getting the people off the stairway is a smart idea for this turn, but not going straight into that force of um, units. I learned my lesson, so based on that, I kept most of my units back, but I made sure that they're in range for when they do get a little bit closer, so we'll be able to completely converge on them. But let's kind of see how the enemy reacts now, since we did have to redo that turn. So 
Although the top units are going to probably have the same movement, um, I do feel like the bottom half of the units are, are going to be a little bit more aggressive this turn with their movements, and that's actually a good thing for us. As long as we can get that thief into range, I feel like we can easily just go in and get rid of whoever we really need to. Because honestly, that thief is the only big problem in there. Because I was able to get rid of the problem people pretty easily earlier, but the only thing is, is once I got rid of them, the thief actually was able to converge completely on top of me, and I actually didn't know you would be able to get in range of him. Huh, that's actually surprising, but that actually gets rid of one of them, as long as Wolf gets both his hits in. Perfect. I'll definitely take that, and the thief actually stayed back, which is really good, because that makes it so we don't have to worry too much there. Okay, Marth, I need you to start making your way, buddy. Uh, Ogma, uh, you can just run your way over there, I think. Other than that, um, Marth, I want you to um, actually get as close as you can. Sadly, Lena is one movement off, but next turn she'll be able to move Marth to where he needs to be, But and then Marth can actually move after that, so honestly, it's better off that we have another turn on that, so honestly, that still works out. Thankfully, the Thief is far out of our range now. Due to the fact that he does have seven movements, so basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. As long as we don't go in this little range here, we should be perfectly fine. I think it's actually this range in here, I think, actually. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. No, but it's this, this little range here. So as long as we don't go anywhere around here, he shouldn't be able to jump right on top of us. But we can easily get rid of his, these three mages easily now, thankfully. Due to that being the case, I do know that Drawn can take on the guy with um, the stronger tome, so we will be having Drawn go on top of him as soon as we can, and thankfully we found him pretty early, and thankfully he's in the front of the pack, so thankfully Drawn can go over here with no problem. So all we need to do is just Silver Sword this guy, Drawn will actually double this guy for some reason, even though... I would think that Drog wouldn't be able to, but apparently the Silver Sword is not heavy enough to count as a thing that would stop him from doubling here, which I'm actually pretty surprised about, because I could have sworn my drog was at 14 speed, based on what I remember, so um, yeah, 14 speed and he had 16. So I'm guessing the tome was heavier than my silver sword, which is actually really nice. That actually works out for us. Okay, other than that, um, Navar, I want you to double this guy, because I know you will double this guy no matter what I do, but if I use a Killing Edge, I might actually one-shot him, since the Killing Edge is supposed to have a high chance of critting, based on what I would think, due to the fact that that's how it is in the future games, and honestly, I don't think they would call it the Killing Edge and not have a high crit chance or high killing power with the ability, so I hope that's actually the case with the weapon, because I actually didn't actually do any research on that for this game, because I'm kind of going based on some of my knowledge from the future games and some some of the knowledge that I found off the wiki for certain things I really needed to, like Swarm and some of the Mage Tomes, because some of the Mage Tomes are completely different in this game than they are in the future ones. So honestly, there is no way of me figuring that all out on my own. And some in most of the um, silver weapons, because I wasn't sure how those worked in this game. But if we didn't have to go to that in order to figure that out, honestly, I would I would have loved to be able to figure that out if the game had like an in-game way of checking all that stuff, because that stuff's important, honestly. So being able to not know some of that stuff is actually really bad for us, because that would be some like important stuff for us to know. Okay, I think we can move um, Zane in here, and we can also use the Silver Sword here. I think as long as we dodge... I don't think we have to dodge here, actually. As long as we do... Actually, one-shot damage is perfect, too. I'll definitely take that, so now we don't have to worry about dodging now. Since this guy's weapon should be the Fire Tome, so 5 damage, so now we don't have to worry at all. Okay, um, I would still move Wolf in that area, but it's not smart, so I'm just going to move Wolf up here. Since I do know that the um, the Thief does do some pretty hefty damage, I believe it was 14 to Wolf, is based, um, based on what I remember. Because I was trying to figure it out, and then Wolf was the one that was getting attacked, and I think it was 14 damage, which added up since he got doubled by the Thief. 
So yeah, there's some problems there with uh, moving Wolf into that area, so just in case we're going to be smart about that. Um, it looks like we don't have many things to worry about coming at us, so we can easily just move, um, I think this is Keda, yeah, Keda into this area. Although not too far since there is the sniper, so we do want to be careful. And we do want to have, um, Kane in the area for that sniper as well, so just in case, let's block that off and they somehow figure out a way to get to where where Kata is or Minerva or something. I don't know if the enemies can use warp staff, so just in case we're going to be a little bit careful with that since I know in the future games enemies can use warp staffs or a type of warp, which is um, a self-warp. I believe it's the Shadow Valencia game in specific that I remember it in, where the um, warlock-like enemies um, or witches can actually teleport themselves next to you as long as you're in their mad major range and they have huge range for them to actually teleport to you so as long as you're near them they'll actually teleport on top of you and trying to attack you in the same turn so yeah there's some problems you need to worry about in the future games i don't know about in this game but i feel like that should be a safe movement as long as we're careful with what we're doing now and actually paying attention to the fact that these guys have 16 speed now, I should be fine as long as I'm paying attention. I wasn't really paying attention and didn't didn't know that these guys were going to have the 16 speed and threw uh, Minerva right into that. No, not really remembering that Minerva, like, it is easy to double due to the fact that Due to how Minerva was before, I did throw a speed, um, I think we threw, yeah, we ended up throwing a speed wing on her, but even with the speed ring, she, oh wait, that's actually not the movement we wanted to do with Martha, I already said what we were going to do, we were going to do a warp on him first, and then move him, so let's warp Marth, um, honestly, the best possible movement for our Marth here would actually be the closest we can kind of get them over here, so... I'm gonna say, like, right here would be a smart spot. We don't want to teleport him where Garnef is due to the fact that Garnef won't be able to go down due to the fact that Martha isn't gonna be the one that can actually knock him out. It's actually gonna be, um, our buddy Merrick, so we do want to be careful here. So, as long as we're smart with how we place our unit here and um, are smart where we're actually going to be moving our units. Also, apparently the Silver Lance is heavier than the sword, so we're actually going going to go in with the Silver Sword instead, due to the fact that apparently the um, Silver Lance has a lot of weight to it, due to the fact that Drog still doubled the guy with 16 speed with um, his Silver Sword, but for some reason the 16 Minerva with her Silver Lance wasn't able to double the same unit, so... I'm going to say the Silver Sword must have a lot less weight if that's the case, which is really nice to know, because I actually did not know that, because I did not look into the Silver Sword, but I did look into the Silver Lance earlier, so I don't remember the weight, weight of it. I think it's like 6 for the Silver Lance. I could be a little bit off because it has been quite a while since I even looked at any of that stuff, because honestly, once we got to like chapter 10, I really didn't need to look into Might anymore, other than when it came to the Tomes. And that's the only thing I have seen for Might as of Chapter 10, I think. So, let's see here. Um, we do have the Talisman and the Draco Shields now, so we should probably see if we can maybe go up to 14 Resistance now, because honestly, that would be a cool um, level there. But just in case, we are going to use our Mercerius here, since I will be able to get this guy out of our way. And I don't think we're critting here, but we are doing some massive damage. 28 damage is always nice to see. We should be able to block this. Yeah, 5 damage. Our 17 defense kind of shines through whatever these guys try and do, honestly. So, thankfully, once we actually do use our Draco Shield, we will be at 20, though. So we will be at the highest defense we could possibly be in the near future, which is going to be really nice. Because that will save us in a lot of tough, um, tough fights from now on, since... We're on like the last little stretch here, and I'm pretty sure once we hit Medius, we're going to be running into enemies that are either max statted or at least very close to it. I'm pretty sure Medius would definitely be max statted at least. And actually, they moved completely out of this thief's range, so that means we actually get to knock this guy out for free now. Because now we don't have to worry about the Devil Sword user. Because he's so far back that I think he's like one movement out of our range. So now we don't even have to worry now. So that's actually perfect. 
because that saves us from getting hit by that devil sword, because that thing does some high damage if you get hit by that. Let me make sure for sure, though. So seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, he's still in the range, but I feel like Zane should be able to... Well, let me check. It depends on how much speed this guy has. He has a speed of 13. As long as we use the silver sword instead of the silver lance, we should be fine. And I'm pretty sure Zane has a bunch of silver swords. Oh no, he only has one, but honestly, it still should work, honestly. So let's try it out, and it should give us a double here. So this guy won't be able to use his devil sword. I haven't seen them crit with the devil sword yet. I thought it had high crit. Apparently I was wrong, so... Thankfully, they're not, um, we aren't, we don't have to worry about using them, but I just don't want to find out that it does one-shot you or something out of nowhere and just have to worry about all that, because that would be just terrible to run into in the middle of an episode, I'll be honest. If I was playing, like, solo and I didn't need to worry about, um, using I items like that and having to worry about, um, being one-shotted or something and having to, like, start back the turn a little bit, then I would use the, the Devil Swords and Devil Axes more commonly, but I just feel like, um, if we were to use one, it would en it would end up making us have to do a, a skip to get back to where we were. So honestly, it's just better to not worry about using those weapons and just save us the hassle than honestly just doing it that way, to be completely honest. And also, Merrick is actually so slow that it's actually taking him quite a while to actually get to where he needs to be in the next couple turns, because he's going to be the one taking on Garnif in the near future, but due to the fact that he's a little bit further away, it's actually going to take him a little bit just to get over there. So hopefully it doesn't take him too long to walk up here, since the six movement does kind of hinder him a little bit. And this guy's there's no way in any way, shape, or form that this guy's going to double Marth, so we don't need to worry about that. So Mercurius, you get rid of this guy, thank you buddy. And down goes another one of these little heroes. And actually, um, talking, um, Talking about things that I wanted to do, previously I would have um, actually did um, the secret shop in this episode, but due to the fact that um, based on something I thought about in the previous episode which I brought up upon, um, we might not even have to because of the fact that although we do have the ability- I'm going to use the Gradivus here just to knock this guy out since it will one-shot him, just to get him out of here so one less healer. But I want to use the um, secret shop here because, as I said, um, the secret shops are. They, the, I did check out where each and every one were, was just so we wouldn't miss it in case we really wanted to use it. But due to the fact that this one's all upgrade items, and I did have the idea that we can actually keep uh, Merrick as a mage and not have to go for all the upgrade items, since I thought we were going to get our general for like the longest time, um, eventually by this chapter at least, but sa sadly they don't actually have a general upgrade of, um, item in this game, so we don't even have to worry about one of those. So due to the fact that I don't think turning him into a bishop would even give him more movement speed based on, I'm pretty sure there's still 6 speed, so there's no point in us actually changing him since his stats are already pretty fine, and um, what do you call it? I think it might increase his HP and his defense, which actually his defense would be nice to have, actually. But, well, let me check his defense. If, if his defense is a little bit lower, then I might still think about it. But, the thing is, is since we can actually, um, we can actually tell who's who out of all of our mages, because we have our two bishops, Alina and Wendell, and then since he's not a bishop himself, he's a mage, we can actually easily um, distinguish him in the crowd of, nor of everyone having the same sprite in this game. Because in the future games, you would have like people with different hair, different armor, so you didn't have to really worry about uh, <laughs> moving your units and um, not knowing who's who. Because that's definitely a problem in this game. I've had um, I've had problems uh, distinguishing people due to the fact that the sprites are all the same in this game. And can you really blame me? Because <laughs> there's really not much I can do there other than 
hope and pray that I'm saying the right unit when I'm moving them if, right at the time that we're moving them. So this should be Navarre, right? Let's see here. Yep, Navarre. Okay, I got it right, because Ogma's on the left. I should have remembered that since he was the one with the door key, so honestly that wasn't the hardest one, but still, like, how could you tell that between having two sprites that are both heroes unless you remember their exact movements the last turn? But you wouldn't know that at the start of a chapter because of the fact that there's no way for you to distinguish that. So, see what I'm saying? There's really some problems when it comes to that sometimes. Okay, so now that we're actually up here, now we can actually start dealing with these fake Garnifs and the real Garnif. So, in order to get rid of the real Garnif, we're actually going to need Merrick up there. So, we might actually have to speed through a couple turns to give him a chance to kind of catch up. Since he is so far back, I don't know if there's any reinforcements, so I'm going to still move our units forward just in case if there is any possibility of some random uh, units coming out of nowhere. Actually, as long as we have people that are able to defend themselves, we should be fine keeping some units down here. So like Zane, he can turn into Navarre, Ogma can stay down here just in case. Lena, as long as she's in a decent spot hiding behind the stairwell, we should be fine there as well. I'm gonna keep Ogma there just so Lena can go past her, or past him. And then, we, do we really need Wendell? Wendell's our healer, so let's keep Wendell nearby, but as close as we can keep him, I guess, just in case. And since we are on this turn, let's create a bookmark just in case so we don't mess up here, since there is a possibility of us messing up if we're not careful. I don't know if it's safe to drag this guy out, so let's see here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, as long as we move here, and then throw on a javelin, we should be able to attack him back, so we should be able to attack from there. I'm gonna move my units a little bit closer, including Marth, because if Marth's as close as he can get, he can get more movement out of that. And then Kata can move a little bit to the left, I guess. And I feel like that should be a decent turn, so let's end our turn there. And let's kind of see how these fake Garnefs work. Because I don't think they're going to look exactly like him, since he, I'm pretty sure he had his own model, based on what I remember as well. Or actually, I don't think he did, actually, now that I think about it. He did use his um, Imhulu, um, Imhulu tome, but he wasn't to the point where he like completely just tried to get rid of us. He was on the map, but he wasn't like... He wasn't as aggressive as he could have been, is what I'm trying to say, when we last dealt with him, so... Because he ended up running off the map and eventually, after a couple turns, so we don't need to worry too bad about him. As long as we stay out of his range, he shouldn't chase us down, so... I feel like that's more than likely going to be the case, he won't chase us down, so we should be fine. As long as we stay out of his range, that is. Okay, um, he's too far out of the range now, so we should be able to just run in and start dealing some damage to him. I'm going to actually go in with Kata though, since Kata can actually get some experience here. So we're going to throw Kata right in here and use our Silver Lance, I think. Yeah, Silver Lance. We don't want to waste too many Gradivus charges since we only have 10 left. And once we go through those 10, we're completely done with them. So just in case, we are going to be careful there. And due to the fact that Marth is, does have a couple turns until... Mary does make his way upstairs. We can actually use our items now since that is something we usually wait for in between or on episodes. So, because I don't like using my stat boosting items in between episodes, because honestly, I just feel like it's kind of cheap to do it like that. So, let's try out using our um, talisman here. So, talisman should be allowed to be used again. No, it doesn't. Okay, so. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. I was kind of hoping that I could use the talisman again, so you can only use it once. So seven is the max then, if you can only, if it didn't work ent entirely. So good to know, because I actually did not know that. So seven is max, so someone else can take that talisman now. Um, hmm, who would it be smart to put it on? Maybe Kata? Or... Maybe even Merrick, because Merrick's going to be fighting Garnef in a second. I don't know how much damage Garnef's going to be doing to him. Due to the fact that I don't know how fast Garnef actually is. Garnef is 18 speed, we have 20 I believe. I think Merrick is at 20, so we don't need to worry about that. Yeah, we're perfectly fine for speed, so he doesn't need to worry too much. But we can still do something here, so... 
Oh, I actually did not expect um, reinforcements to spawn up here. Okay, that could be a problem, due to the fact that I didn't expect that. But thankfully, Kata has double speed, so we don't need to worry about the reinforcements too much. But they are making their way over here, so at least we get some um, things happening here, though, since that wasn't something I actually expected. So, cool. I actually didn't expect some reinforcements, so that's actually nice to be able to fight some people up here, because I actually was thinking we were going to have to skip until Merrick made his way up here, but thankfully that was not the case. Okay, so first off first is we want to get these guys out of our area, so let's make sure to use Drog here, because Drog is decently helped, and he will double these guys um, more than likely, so we don't need to worry about that one. So thank you, Drog, for dealing with that guy for me. Okay. I don't think um, Garnef can run his way over here, so let's make sure of that. Okay, let's see here. He has six movement, right? Six movement. Yes, he does. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, as long as we don't move onto this spot here, we should be fine. Okay, perfect. I can work with that. So... Let's see here. I'm thinking... Hmm, is this guy gonna double me? I honestly don't know. He has 16 speed, so yeah, let's not try that. But we can use Minerva here and go right here, and then we can use our Silver Sword since we have multiple of them, and this will more than likely make it so we don't get doubled here by that random bishop. So just in case, it would be safer to do this instead. And it also one-shots him, thankfully, so that actually makes it even better here, because now we don't have to worry about maybe getting getting a random uh, knockout shot here, since usually these mages don't like to crit, so we don't need to worry about that one. Okay, so first off first is we want to... I was going to um, actually transfer off the talisman to Merrick, but apparently Merrick's full on his inventory, so there's no point in even trying that. But I am going to equip the Starlight now, since he is kind of in the area, and get ready for Garnef when we do fight off with him eventually. Okay, um, I'm going to say probably the reinforcements are going to keep spawning up here, like they just did, so I'm going to prepare for that, I think, and then... I don't think Kata... Yeah, Kata needs backup, actually. Move Kata there. Martha's fine since he has 7 resistance, and we can end turn there. Okay. Now that we're in a nice and easy spot, since Garnef's not moving, thankfully, and that also kind of pushes him out in the open as well, because... Ooh, he has Thoron, actually. I did not actually expect that one. Okay, so yeah, that could have been much worse if we didn't... Um, if he had more speed. Because if we weren't using our silver lan or our silver sword there, he would have doubled us. So that's actually good that um, we actually didn't move into that. Okay, so Garnef, how far can you move from here? Because I need to make sure that you can't get on top of me. So two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so as long as... So he can attack us anywhere in here. So we do need to be careful, so... The best thing to do here is go in with Marth, maybe, because of the fact that Marth does have his resistance, but actually, I got an idea. So the first things first is what we want to do is we actually want to mend Marth's wounds first, because that'll, that'll give him all his HP back. So then we can go in. Garnef shouldn't be able to double me, but we do have this guy with his blizzard. We have this guy with his Thoron, and this guy with his Thoron. So we do want to be careful, but we also want to be safe. So I'm going to say that we more than likely, we move Marth here. And then we go in with our Mercerius and do as much damage to this guy. Because we can throw things at this guy as long as, um, as long as we move correctly. And I did not actually expect us to one-shot that dude, so that works. I actually didn't expect that one, so that actually works out perfectly. Um, other than that, um, I'm thinking Parthia Bow, maybe? I don't know, actually. I'm gonna um, create a bookmark there that did save. Okay, it did. I just wanted to make sure, because the movement here is gonna be very, very close here if we don't do this right. Okay, so Drog. That guy's using Thoron, so he does 13 damage. I don't know if this guy is gonna double Wolf here, because the fact that Wolf- oh yeah, he's definitely. There's no way. 
Okay, so I'm guessing Merrick then? Yeah, Merrick. Because we can then heal Merrick, so as long as we do a decent amount of damage here, we should be fine. I'm gonna go Belognon, I think. I think Belognon should be fine. As long as we're being careful here, as long as we're staying out of major problems, since he should be fine because he's gonna double no matter what, and he dodged twice. Okay then, um, that's nice. Um, I didn't actually expect that one. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Honestly, I want to try using the Granibus. I'm going to use one stack of it, because this chapter I don't have to worry too much, as long as we don't waste the entire thing. So, I think as long as we use the Granibus here, yeah, 30 damage, perfect. That gets him out of the way. And that's the only problem I was dealing with here, so we didn't need to worry too bad. Thankfully, that guy barely did much damage to Merrick, so we should be fine. That should also pull Garnef over to Marth, so we should be fine there as well. So, I'm gonna say we can end turn safely now. I'm gonna go with that. And if it is, that's perfect. Cause... Oh, Garnef's actually not moving. Really? Okay. I actually didn't expect him to not move and... I didn't even think about your HP. <laughs> Oops. Um... Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> oh no, that sucks. Um... <laughs> Oops. Okay, here we go. You must not value your life very much. I will show you the true terror of the darkest magic, Ilmuhulu. And I actually thought he wasn't going to move, but apparently he decided to move this turn, so I'm kind of confused now. Well, there he goes again. This guy is going to try and go for his blizzard again. Thankfully, we have enough speed to actually deal with his blizzard, so thankfully we don't need to worry about being doubled here. And thankfully I was holding the Granivus because that one shot in that dude too. Okay, perfect. And now he's actually in in um in the area for Merrick to actually go ham here. I don't know if this is gonna get him in one hit, so I am gonna create a bookmark just in case. And we are gonna try this out. So hopefully the Starlight Tome actually works here and actually gets rid of Garnef, because I don't know how this is gonna work. So hopefully this does some decent Oh! It just is a random critical hit out of nowhere. Gah, Starlight! Too powerful, I'm undone! Know this, young prince. You may have the strength to best me, but Medius... Ha! Huh, I will await you in hell. And down goes Garnef. Garnef was holding the falchion. Yes, he was, and Merrick obtained the falchion. And we're definitely dropping a white... Um, any kind of weapon. Um, hmm... Honestly... Elfire. Yeah, Elfire. I would keep the Elfire, but we're just full on it, uh, everything, so just in case, we're just going to be smart there. I'm also going to keep Marth in place just so we can transfer over the item in general. We're also going to use our Draco Shield here so we can go up to 20 defense, which is going to be nice. Perfect. Okay, now we just need to figure out how we want to end this um, next couple turns. Since there is two healers, we have no Garnef now. We only have the fake ones. I'm pretty sure both of these are fake. We have that one on the throne, and this one right here ready to attack us at some point. Um, I do feel like we should heal Marth now, since Marth is a little low. I ended up healing Kata instead, because it was a much better um, idea due to the fact that Marth does have the um, resistance, so it was able to save him in case Mar uh, Garnef did try to attack him. Because I think um, the reason that Garnef didn't um, go on top of Marth was due to the fact that he didn't do enough damage to actually be um, substantial, so he ended up canceling his attack, so he ended up didn't he didn't even want to chase us down, thankfully. So, but thankfully, since Kato was in the area, he ended up, he did end up running up to Kata instead, which en ended up having him uh, be dragged out perfectly, because it actually helped us out tremendously, since I wasn't sure if he was going to run out or not before, but thankfully, now we know how his AI works, because he won't, g won't attack Marth for some reason, but... He will attack our other units, which ended up saving us some time there. Okay, now that Garnef is um, no more, we can actually perfectly just run in willy nilly and actually deal with these guys perfectly fine. Since we do have the resistance, we can just run in with Marth, get this guy out of our way as fast as possible, saving us a little bit of time here trying to deal with these um, mages since they do do some decent damage. Because this swarm does like 16 might. As if we didn't have the 7 resistance. Thankfully we had the 7 resistance, so that actually gave us some 
proper um, defense against these guys, because the, there was a lot of mages on this map, so thankfully the resistances to them is actually nice to have, because we don't get any resistance throughout the game in general, so having the little bit of blockage to that is actually really nice. Um, is the falchion actually breakable in this game? That is one thing I do need to know. Falchion is not breakable. Okay, perfect. That's actually really good, because if it was breakable, we would only be using it on Medius, but due to the fact that it actually has no durability, it means we can use him as much as we want, and we're going to be using them just like we would uh, with Tiki and Batu, so that's actually going to be really fun in the near future. Um, I feel like we don't really need to move the rest of our army, we should be perfectly fine, so let's end turn there, and... Honestly, they, all they got left is the guy that's not going to move from his post, and the runaway curates that are just running for their lives at this point, because the other guy is not going to help them, because he won't move from that post, because he's programmed to not move, and due to that being the case, they, um, he won't leave because of the fact that if he moves, he, he undoes the um, blockage of the throne room, which actually gives us the free win, and the game, and the... Nintendo programmed that on for a reason, so you can't just end a chapter just like that. So, because you could easily just warp someone on top of the throne if you really wanted to. So thankfully uh, for them, we can't do that. So we're going to actually drop off our talisman to... Actually, now that we don't need it on Merrick, so technically we don't really need to do that. Although we can... Oh wait, man, <laughs> you're low on HP. Never mind, not you. Um, Drong's low on HP, isn't he, too? So, yeah, Drong can't do this either. I didn't actually think about that. I forgot how low these people were, so I was gonna run, um, Kata in and do all that, but apparently that's not gonna be the best case scenario here. So, honestly, the best thing we can probably do here, I'm pretty sure Kata's actually full on inventory as well, which would be a problem. Yep, she is. Um, how about Drong? Can I throw an item on to Drong? No, I can't. Okay, then, um... Trying to think of something we can do here that would give us at least something we could possibly do here. I'm pretty sure this guy has... yeah, he doesn't. Thank you. Thank you for actually having having an open inventory slot, because it actually helps us out here. Okay, so I want you to actually throw your killing edge over for one turn, just so we can give Kata the, um, the little bit of resistance, because then she will be able to deal with whatever kind of mages we deal with in the near future, because I'm not sure if we're going to be really dealing with them anymore after this chapter, but just in case, Kata and Martha are the more important characters, since they're the more um, main characters, due to the fact that we've had them since the very beginning, although Kane and Abel have been like that, but Kata has been able to recruit units, unlike Kane and Abel, and Marth, Marth and Kata have basically been the only characters that can recruit people into our army, so honestly, if we're going to say anyone's a main character, it's literally only those two and the couple of characters that had the ability to recruit, like Astrum, or not Astrum, um, Midia, the lady that was able to recruit Astrum and stuff like that. Um, so honestly, there's not much we really needed to worry about other than that. Um, looks like we can easily just run our lances through these curates and then we're pretty much done with these guys, because... Yeah, this this one guy that's just sitting here is not gonna defend that off that that often, and probably not enough to survive. I'm just gonna be completely honest. And thankfully, these guys have no speed, so we double these guys no matter what happens here. So down goes the curates. I just want to make sure that all the people are off the map before we finish off the chapter, because I usually like to do that, unless it's for ooh fortify, ooh strength. I'll definitely take me some strength. Um, is that max strength for Minerva, or is that like 18? How close are we? 17. 17's nice. I'll take 17. I'll definitely take 17. We would have been 18 if we didn't lose that one stack of strength that we got earlier, because we had to um, turn rewind in order to survive a turn, and we ended up losing the free strength that we would have had, so that would have been 18 there if that never happened. Sadly, that did happen, so we ended up losing out on that 18th strength, because that would have been a dream. Because having multiple units on high um, attack is actually really nice to have, because we've seen some nice um, combos we've done lately with some of our units. Okay, let's see here. What do we do with this guy, though? In order to get rid of this Garnef, I feel like the best thing to do possibly here is to 
One, I want to use my talisman on you, Kada. So let's use your talisman, give you your seven resistance. Let's create a bookmark just so we save that for later. Um, we should run Marth right in here, I think. I don't know if Marth is going to be able to get rid of this person on his own. Actually, you know what? We might be able to give Wendell a level here if we do this right, because Merrick's full HP. So as long as Merrick does a decent amount of damage here, I'm not going to use the Starlight Tome though, because the Starlight Tome I don't want to waste, because we can use that on the final chapter, since we're so close to it anyways, and... Oh, never mind, Merrick got him. <laughs> I did not expect that, and there's the Bishop Ring. Okay, um, we get our choice of using that now. Hmm, I think I should. Honestly, I think I should. We'll create a bookmark beforehand just to see the if it does increase the defense. If it doesn't, then I won't do it. But I honestly, I feel like we probably should if it does, because the defense would be nice, because then Merrick would survive more hits when it comes to close range. So hopefully this does give him some defense, because if it does, that's perfect. And if it did, that's actually good. Okay, so three defense is fine. Okay, you know what? It was worth it. Three defense is actually nice. Okay, perfect. I'll definitely take that. And we are done with the Dark Pontifex. Let's do this. Let's seize the throne and... Oh, I'm guessing this is, is Marcia's sister, Elise. Oh, Marth, I, I miss you so well. Um, look at how you've grown. Father would be so proud. Um, Elise, I am glad to see you're safe. After I heard that Garnef had taken you, I was so worried. Um, Garnef ca kidnapped me to secure the spell of revival, um, to that Godo gave me. There is a temple in the Southern Dolor where this staff can be used to revive an ally. If there is one precious to you who has lost their life, let's travel to Dolor and revive them. Actually, we have lost zero people, so can we just go to Medias then? Because we haven't lost anybody. I would like to save out on a chapter if we can. <laughs> Because I don't know what's coming up in the next one. Oh, this definitely does not look like the final one. I can tell you that one. I do know what the final chapter looks like, because... Um, I did check check to just see kind of what it looked like, because I was interested with the whole um, fact that it told me that there was going to be new music, thankfully. But it looks like we can only have 15 units on this map, so it looks like we have to leave someone behind again. Like last time, because we left quite a bit of units behind, since we only could bring 12 before, so yeah, we could only- we ended up leaving six- four people behind, because we had a team of 16, so 15, oof. Tw on the 24th chapter, someone's gonna be losing some experience. Are you sure, game? Because I could- I'm pretty sure a team of 16 is gonna be needed for the final one, I would think, since it does look like it's gonna be a bigger map, since it's a- um, based on what I saw, it's a big indoor map. It's huge, um, for what I can see. Um, actually, it might not be that big. Based on how it kind of looks, it might be the size of the Manakeet Princess chapter. But, honestly, I'm not sure. But, with that, let's actually take a small look at what we're dealing with. I'm guessing... Ooh, is this a throne? What is this? That looks strange. I've never seen a throne look like that before. But, this looks like where the actual place is. So, what's going on with the blue area over there? Because that's something new entirely. I'm guessing that might- Oh, maybe that's where you can revive your player. Oh, now that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, so let's see here. Zemsol, the Manakeets. So this is going to be your tr chapter 24 slash the second to last boss. Um, nothing too dangerous here. What about Tome? Um, Mage Stone. Okay, so he's got the- one that doesn't let you use uh, mages on him. Okay, so although that's a little bad for us, but we can easily just run uh, Marth in here. We should probably drag out some Wyrm Slayers, but I feel like saving that for Medius would be a better idea due to the fact that he is a dragon and he's going to be a final boss dragon. So honestly, saving our Wyrm Slayers would be probably safer for that chapter. But I honestly don't know what's going to happen in this one due to the fact that I don't know if there's going to be masses, massive amount, uh, amounts of re, uh, reinforcements since the game has been pretty aggressive with, with reinforcements on certain chapters. So I don't know if we need to be careful when it comes to this one specifically. But with that, we're going to actually end it off here. 
it looks like the next chapter is going to be a little bit harder than the previous one at least. So it does look like the game is increasing in difficulty, slowly but surely, because that chapter wasn't too bad, but this one is a lot more open, with a lot more units that look like they're going to be much more of a problem, like Manakeets for instance. Manakeets have high defense, but it's low damage for the most part, but they have high defenses, so you kind of have to like hit them and hit them and hit them until they actually eventually go down. So they do. we do need to worry about those guys a little bit. And then, well, there's some bishops with fire, but that's not really a problem, is it? It's Blizzard, yeah, that's not much of a problem. The snipers are actually something I'm a little scared about, because these guys like to crit me a lot, so that could be a problem there. Um, how about this bishop here? Belong none. Okay, so 12 damage from that guy. Probably 24 if he doubles me. So we do need to be careful about that specific mage. Um, are all these firestone users? Nope, one of them's a mage stone. Okay, so we need to worry about um, random mage stone manakeets. Because usually we don't ran run into that, so usually it's a boss with one of those. So that's a thing we need to worry about in the next one. Okay, Levin Sword, we don't need to worry about that. Seven damage from, um, from a random hero, that's actually nicer to be hit by seven damage from a hero instead of being hit by through my defenses. So honestly, I'll take that over being hit for 14 and 14. <laughs> honestly, it's safer. <laughs> I'll be honest, but with that, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Chapter 24, I don't know what this chapter is actually called, so I'm not going to say that, but... Yeah, we're definitely getting really, really close to the end of the series, and honestly, I'm a little sad because I've had a lot of fun with this. I've had more fun with this than I had with Three Houses, as I was explaining earlier. I thought Three Houses was fun, but it was more... It was kind of disappointing in a way, because you weren't allowed... You weren't given as much freedom as you were with um, Awakening... Shadow Dragon, the remake, because I heard that the DS remake was actually very, um, it gave you a lot of freedom, like Awakening. It was basically what started Awakening for how much freedom you got to do with things you wanted to do. And then F Fates was a lot of freedom as well. So honestly, although there's not as much, um, freedom in Three Houses, it wasn't a terrible game. I still like it. I still love the story. I still like the characters. I just felt like the the freedom in the game was a little bit lower than you would than I was used to. Because Blazing Sword and Blazing Blade felt more um, like free with what you can do. Even because you can. Um, I remember in Sacred Stones you can go and farm for levels in um, the tower. The Tower of, like, um, I forgot what it was called, but it was Tower of Monsters, and you would eventually be able to recruit, like, dead units that were never supposed to be on your team, but due to the fact that, um, you got them through that, it was like a special, tr like, a trophy for completing certain parts of it, so you got free units through that, which was pretty cool, but, like, stuff like that, like, it felt like you had more freedom in some of the older games than Three Houses did, which was kind of unfortunate, because... There's so much that, like, they, they like, basically grabbed you by the neck and told you, no, you can't do that. And I was so used to some, some of the features in the newer games. Even Shadows of Valencia was pretty freedom-heavy, if I'll be honest. So, with that, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And we're going to be heading into the final two chapters in the next two episodes. And, honestly, I don't know what we're going to be dealing with soon, because... This game has been very aggressive, as I said, with the reinforcements on some of the levels, so for all I know, we're going to be dealing with quite a bit. So, thank you all for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. Hey, boys and girls, thank you all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode. And keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.